private properties that line this half mile stretch of beach are worth more than $2 billion. That's an average of 150 million a piece. How did this beachfront known as Billionaire's Row become the most valuable real estate in North America? Well, I believe it all started with this shipwreck. This is Billionaire's Row, the most expensive property in North America. Why are we flying in a plane when we probably could do this by drone? Because it's way cooler. Check this thing out. Okay, so long before we had Billionaire's Row, a ship called the James Judge, a colossal four-masted schooner, ran aground on a mostly uninhabited beach south of the town of Palm Beach in 1904. We'll talk more about this ship in a minute, but first I wanna jump back a decade, and to help me dig through the extensive archives of Palm Beach history, I met with Rose Guerrero, who is the research director of the Historical Society of Palm Beach County. Palm Beach, the island, was a jungle in the early 1890s. There wasn't a lot of people living here. Um, it was mainly pioneer families that decided to make the island their home where they felt that they could actually farm the land. Island farming, you know, pineapples, that sort of thing. Anyways, in 1894, Standard Oil's second-in-command, Henry Morrison Flagler, began his southward quest to connect St. Augustine to the Florida Keys with his Florida East Coast Railway. Shortly afterwards, he opened the Royal Poinciana Resort. At the time, it was the largest resort hotel in the world. There were over three miles of hallways alone, and it wasn't cheap. This resort attracted the wealthiest people from the Northeast to ride Flagler's train down to spend the winter months on warm, sunny Florida beaches. I know, beach attire has come a long way. This was a uh, resort town. People were coming here to stay at Henry Flagler's resorts the Royal Poinciana and the Breakers Hotels. So those affluent people weren't actually staying in the, their own personal homes, they were staying at the resorts. About three miles away to the south, George Potter, a pioneer and cartoonist, has escaped the cold, damp Rust Belt city of Cincinnati and headed south to Florida. I think it was to help his asthma or something. He had just been deeded 160 acres of prime beachfront jungle in the form of a government homestead grant for free. This is the area we are talking about that would later become the most valuable property in America. He got it for free. His brother, Dr. Richard Potter joined him and they built a house on the lake, which they called Figulus. That roughly translates to land of the Potter. Dr. Potter was the first physician in Dade County, which at the time stretched from Key Largo all the way up to Jupiter. When Dr. Potter first moved to Biscayne Bay, stories have it he even walked the 50 mile route of the famous barefoot mailman as far north as Palm Beach for house calls. I also found it interesting that after moving to Palm Beach, Dr. Potter would travel the 21 mile length of Lake Worth from patient to patient on his steam powered boat. It was really the most efficient way to get around at the time. So this is the key. There was no north to south road on the island at the time because there wasn't really a need until the James Judge. As I mentioned earlier, the James Judge, like most four-masted schooners of its day, was a massive ship. To give you an idea of its size, it was more than half the length of a football field. That's 150 feet if you're not into sports. It was built in 1890 and based out of Philadelphia. In 1904, it was sailing from Cardenas, Cuba to Jacksonville, Florida along the Atlantic Gulf Stream when it got caught in a hurricane. Nowadays, ships would just pull into a harbor and shelter for a few days. But back then, they had no way of telling if a storm on the horizon would be a passing drizzle or a tropical monsoon. Even though the judge was quite the juggernaut, it was no match for a full-blown Atlantic hurricane. And luckily for the crew, the ship ran aground on the beachfront that would later become known as Billionaire's Row. So the James Judge beached itself without any damage, with, um, with itself pretty much standing upright. Um, it didn't really tilt over too far. It's probably because it didn't have um, cargo. It happens pretty often here in Florida. A lot of ships during that time, they take the Gulf Stream. It's a quick highway up the um, Atlantic Ocean to wherever they're going. And so it comes very close to Palm Beach County, which if a storm blows it, can push it up onto the shore or shipwreck them. 
and it was quite the sight to behold. I don't know at what point it became a tourist attraction, but eventually people found out about the ship and figured out various ways to come down and see it, even carving out a path down to the beach where it stood. There was no clear road from the north side of Palm Beach to the south side of Palm Beach. There were probably walking paths, so they would most likely take those from one side to the other. The community knew that this shipwreck had occurred and most likely it was a, a scene to, to go look at, an event that occurred that you know happened that you might wanna go check out as a resident. It became a popular spot for tea parties and photographs. Photographs were still kind of a new thing. Not everyone had a camera in their pocket like we do now, but if Instagram had been around back then, this ship would have been the selfie capital of the world. It was very interesting. You have this large wooden structure that's very much intact that um, has um, different levels you could climb on um, and on the beach where you're most likely going to be enjoying yourself. The potters eventually sold some of their property to some of the people that were coming down to the island. They found that this particular strip of the island was narrow enough to own both oceanfront and lakefront, which was de rigueur at that time. One such individual was Tammany Hall boss Richard Croker. As the head of the Tammany Hall political machine, notorious for widespread corruption, bribery, extortion, and election fraud throughout New York City, Boss Croker reputedly had, as an associate said, a strong frame, a deep chest, a short neck, and a pair of hard fists. He and his wife Beulah purchased the property where the James Judge ran aground, and they built the first large estate in that section of the town. This house was known as the Wigwam, or as Croker called it, his shack. Richard Croker's home, Wigwam, was a simple home. Um, he, they had several parties there. It wasn't a famous home. It wasn't designed by anyone famous, but it was a humble home for, for him um, in one of his many homes. Wigwam was also the nickname for the Tammany Hall building in New York. It's very likely that he had many politicians and bigwigs at these parties at his Palm Beach Wigwam. So when the road was built connecting his property and the James Judge to the rest of Palm Beach, it might have been more than coincidence that the ship mysteriously caught fire and burnt to ashes a couple days before the road opened in 1916. The much beloved schooner caught fire under unknown circumstances, whether through an act of nature or a more nefarious means, only the ocean knows now. Two days after that, there's a newspaper article sharing the celebration of the opening of the road that was north of Palm Beach heading south towards Delray Beach. By the 1930s, most of this land had been divided up into series of sprawling lake to ocean estates. With the exception of ownership, little had changed geographically. During the first few decades of the 20th century, it was actually more fashionable to live on the north side of the island closer to the cultural epicenter of Palm Beach society. But as those estates were subdivided, the wealthier residents looked southward. There was a large boom on the south end of Palm Beach in the 1920s. We have several homes being built by different architects. Il Palmetto was designed by Maurice Fascio. Il Sogno was Marion Sims Wyeth home. And Lago Mar was designed by Addison Meisner. In the 1980s, the first mention of Millionaire's Row was made for real estate promotions and advertisements. By the mid-2000s, it was commonly referred to as Billionaire's Row, a name that's still ascribed to it today. Who knows if there will be a Trillionaire's Row in the future. This property, assembled between 2013 and 2017, combines several estates into one massive estate, and it's by far the most valuable private residence in Palm Beach and possibly North America. The owner has spent over $350 million so far, and that was well before the property values skyrocketed on the island. It's impossible to know for sure what effect the James Judge may have actually had on the strip of the island. Maybe it was just fortuitous, but the James Judge did attract a lot of influential people to that stretch of the island during a critical period of growth in the town of Palm Beach. So it seems likely that it at least had something to do with it. That's all I've got for now. Thanks for joining me, and we've got a lot more stories coming in the next few months. So hit that subscribe button, tap that bell to get a notification when the next video drops. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. This is actually the beach right over here, roughly where the James Judge used to stand. It's pretty cool. That's Widener's Curve, and the Croker property was just behind there.